Hey there, Arconiacs. This is Dallas with all my favorite things from the screen, and we're here to decode Only Murders in the Building, Episode 6, Performance Review. This episode was amazing, my favorite thus far. This season is very different from last, and I like it more than the first season so far. I'm not ashamed to say it, but there is a lot to go over, so let's get to it. First, I want to talk about Poppy. We love this character. We got a lot of insight into who she is and her motivations. We see how badly she's treated by Cinda, and she thinks Cinda respects her, but we hear that she's not only verbally abusive, but also physically. Cinda's not a good person, and Poppy finds a great person to interview for the newest episode of the Only Murders podcast, Only Murderers podcast, and because of it, asks for a promotion. But Cinda blows her off. Poppy might be breaking up with Cinda to forge her own path and throw Cinda under the bus at the same time. Poppy tells Mabel that Cinda is a liar who will do anything to tell a great story. Not only that, she has fake teeth. It seems that our dearest Poppy White is at odds with Cinda, and though she couldn't stand up to her, she will help Mabel and those old men in any way possible. Let's just hope that she was being metaphorical when she says that she knows where the bodies are buried. Aside from our own known killer, let's get into the next horrible person in the show, Alice. She is not a good person either. I guess from the beginning that she was only using Mabel to further her career, but I didn't think that she would take it to such lengths to do so. She took advantage of Mabel got close to her and used the excuse that you inspire me to take pictures of her apartment that she would use to recreate a copy and in doing so reenact horrible moments from Mabel's life for what appears to be shock art. And then she attempts to gaslight her into saying it was some sort of therapy. Mabel will likely not recover from this. Uh, trust has been broken again and this makes me feel really bad for her. I want to give Mabel a hug. But I think that this is what Alice was trying to do all along. She could have something to do with the painting also, but I feel that it's a little bit odd to do this, betray Mabel in such a large degree, and be tied so closely to the murder, or to the painting at least, that may not have anything to do with the murder. It seems like a bit of conflict of interest, but I can't not escape the parallels of the painting and recreating works of art. We have to assume that those tiny feet belong to Alice. We also got the return of Lucy for a little bit on the set of Brazos, and it looks like the two are hanging out and talking more often, which I enjoy. She took a train to see Charles and she left very quickly after coming, it seems. I'm hoping that she continues to pop up on multiple episodes of the show and she becomes a regular in season three. While on the set, they notice that the matchbook has fingerprints on it and decide the message who they thought was Detective Williams to run the prints. After finding out Williams is on maternity leave, they pull out a play from the old Brazos handbook and stake out to catch this person. After Charles admits that he's still dating the woman who kills Mabel's friend, they miss the man getting bombed by glitter. Mabel decides to walk away, and this is when she finds Alice in her wonderland. Distraught, she leaves on the subway and finds the guy from the trailer who we now know is a guy that had been texting them and is now covered in tar and glitter. Not only that, Mabel stabbed this man and it's all over the internet, making Cinda's latest episode of the podcast a little more credible. Crazy Mabel, you don't know what she's going to do next. This is not looking good for Mabel. And I believe in next episode, they're actually going to go to Detective Williams in order to try and clear all of this up. But who is this person? Is he the killer? Now, before we can even figure that out, let's backtrack a little bit. This person messes Charles and Oliver to get out of the building. It appears that Mabel was not messaged, but why not? Is this because they didn't have her number? 
if that's the case, it could be someone who works at the hotel and Mabel's not actually a resident. Or did they not want Mabel to know that it was them? Or did they not want Mabel to get out of the building? Was she the prime person they were trying to target? Or was it Oscar not wanting to text her and hoping that the three were all together? I don't think this person is a killer, whoever they were, but I do believe that they were attempting to help. Now, this could be Nina's partner, Jared. We don't know how tall he is, but he does seem to be tall from the very few frames that we've seen of him. And as stated before, he is an MMA fighter. So I would assume that he was at least six feet tall. This person is a bit taller than Mabel. Here is a height difference between Mabel and Oscar. I couldn't find a comparison to Marv in height, but this is not the type of clothing that Marv wears. He has a more of a Western look to him. Do you think that this person is taller than Oscar or do you think that they are the same height? I kind of do think this person is taller, but it's so hard to tell. What makes me think that it is Oscar, and this is going to sound wild, but it's the pants. These seem to be a young man's pants. They're kind of tight. It's not anything Marv would wear, but Lena Nin's partner could wear these. This isn't anything Theo would wear, or even Will. This is a young hip man's type of jeans. They're not overly tight, but they... They're not that easy to get out from looking at them. I'm too old to wear these kind of things. I also noticed this little detail on the poster behind Mabel in the train, and I thought that was pretty funny. But if this is Oscar, why would he lie and pretend to be Detective Williams in order to get evidence away from the trio? Maybe if his father was the killer, now I've theorized on this months ago, but I don't know if the motive holds up. We haven't had anything that hinted to him. He's only been mentioned once this season, and they are supposed to be complete stories each season. Nothing serious is supposed to go over to the next season. Contain stories, and for that reason, I don't see anything that has been said, mentioned, or happened this season that would make us think that Jose is the killer. I cannot deny the parallels of tie-dye guy, now the glitter guy, and that the sun was tie-dyed when we first met Oscar, and now it's glittered. These are some very strong parallels to Oscar, and it's either a red herring or pretty much telling us who it is. But because I don't see anything that tells us that Jose or a good reason why Oscar would want to take this information away from the trio. I can't agree that it's him, and I'm going to have to stick with Jared. I could totally be wrong, though. All this is telling me is that I don't know what's going on. I also don't think Mabel will be arrested for this attack. Whoever this person is, I don't think that they're going to go to the police and press charges because they would have a whole lot of explaining to do. Don't forget we're giving away $50 in merchandise from the official Only Murders in the Building Hulu shop. All you have to do is be a subscriber, like, and comment on this video, anything you want, and you'll be entered in. And at the end of the season, we'll be giving that away. Those are my thoughts on the latest episode of Only Murders in the Building. Who do you guys think this person is? Who's, who is this glitter guy? Do you think that it's Oscar? Do you think that it's Marv? Share your thoughts down below. Come back later this week when I will give my first unified theory of what I think might be going on. Who killed Bunny? What's up with the painting? Things like that. I've been working on it for a couple days, but I keep going back and rewriting things. But that should be out by Friday at the latest. Either way, come back next week with another review. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Dallas, and I'll see you on the rooftop.